All right, so I know no one asked, but I'm going to answer the question anyway. Why did I become an environmental engineer? Well, obviously, it's because I'm not a doctor, and you can only have time to be like one or the other, so that's it. See ya. But in all seriousness, I'm going to answer the question, but it's going to, you know, take a whole long backstory to know the answer why. Hopefully, as I'm telling the story, you can sort of relate just because, you know, it's not going to be a clear definition. It's not like I had that one clear direction and goal in life to become one. So you're going to see as I meander along through life, Hopefully it hits you just because, you know, it's okay to, you know, not know what you're doing. It's okay to jump into different fields. It's okay to change your mind. And I'm happy with this field. I'm happy that I took, you know, some decisions, some risks, and that throughout my life, I was able to choose this field based off of the decisions that I made early on in my life. So again, it's okay to make this one choice and then switch on later. You know, it's completely fine. You know, so with that being said, it's just going to be a whole long story time about my personal decisions in my life. And again, I hope that it hits you, and you can sort of see how it relates to you. So if you guys don't know me, hi, my name is Randy, I'm an environmental engineer. I started back right when I was just born. No, it actually started when I was in high school. Back in high school, I actually didn't even know or like want to go straight into like any sort of science field. Back in high school, I wanted to actually join the Marine Corps. Yes, the, that Marine Corps, the military. I don't know what it was about like the whole military. I just thought it was very honorable. I loved the uniform. And so I actually wanted to join that right after high school. But I didn't want to enlist just because, you know, enlisting and becoming an officer, an officer being like a lieutenant and, you know, going way up above that whole ladder, that involved a college degree. So you had to go to college in order to become an officer. And because I have Asian parents, that obviously wasn't a good decision. Or when I told them that I wanted to become one, they were just thinking in their mind, like, why would you waste your time? trying to you know, pursue the military when you, you know, you're much better than that, you're smarter than that. So they're really pushing towards me becoming a pharmacist. So we have two sides of the decision making right here. One is like my life desire at that point was you know, join the Marine Corps or fulfill my parents' dream and become like a pharmacist. So I was just thinking in order for me to even become an officer, I have to go to college. So I might as well you know, pursue that route of becoming a pharmacist, which is why I majored in chemistry. So I was essentially hitting two birds with one stone. I was pursuing the Marine Corps route, you know, fulfilling their requirement of getting a college degree, and also fulfilling my parents' desire of becoming a pharmacist. You know, I was still on that route to you know just getting a degree and also sort of fulfilling that STEM major requirement of getting some sort of science degree. So again, this is why I pursued my bachelor's in chemistry, and then all throughout my whole undergrad. I was pursuing the whole Marine Corps route, so I did find a place. They did let me train with them, so I trained with Marine Corps officers. I trained with them for like three years, so for three out of four years during my undergrad, I was pursuing that route. So I trained with them like every single week for three years. But out of all those three years, three out of four years, I applied for the program. There's three slots every single year, so essentially I applied like nine times, but I did not get in at all. I got rejected nine times. And essentially that just discouraged me year after year. Finally, in the last year I said, you know, if I don't get in this year, then I'm just going to quit and just stop because I don't think it's right for me. You know, it's just very disheartening to know that, you know, after three years, it's just all gone to waste. Some of you guys might be thinking, like, you know, I could just kept trying one more time, never give up. But I think at that point when I left, when I eventually stopped applying, I was happier because in a way, I just wanted to have that experience. It wasn't like I wanted that so badly because, you know, my whole life would have changed for I don't know what will happen afterwards. But in the end, I was happy with what I got out of them. So I left with closure. I left with a good feeling. So that was my end route. So now I fulfilled my goal. I fulfilled my goal of experiencing what I wanted from the Marine Corps. And now, three out of four years later, undergrad, now I have to make a decision with my life because I'm about to graduate like next year. What am I gonna do for the rest of my life? Like what pursuit, what route, what career field do I choose? Do I stick with chemistry or do I go on with something else? So now at that point, I was just like stuck thinking about like what am I gonna do with my whole life? So this is where many college students are gonna have like existential midlife crisis kind of thing. Yeah, that was what I was going through also. So I just, you know, went on through my whole daily class, just like a normal routine college student life. And then eventually I found, like I just took this one elective class, but this one professor was really, really passionate. He was really like engaging and he was really passionate about his subject and his teaching was water chemistry. So in that class, I learned about like water chemistry and it was fun and it was cool. He really taught about like sustainability and like climate change and like what the future might hold. So in a way, he sort of 
scared me and like freaked me out like oh no this world is gonna turn into like an apocalyptic world if you don't do anything about it and mind you i'm living in california between 2012 and 2016 that was like the peak of the california drought and you know that just sort of confirmed my belief that like the world is gonna be apocalyptic if you don't do anything about it so that just made me think okay i should do something towards like sustainability towards the environment in the future because i don't want to like spend the rest of my life in this whole apocalyptic world when I had a decision to change something or to do something about it. And so eventually I was just thinking, should I do something towards like environmental science, environmental studies, like climate change? What kind of field is there really in the environment or sustainability side? And so I was just scrolling through Google, just typing in like, what do I do with my life? Eventually environmental engineering popped up and I was just thinking, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, engineering is like a pretty stable field. Environmental, so like I'm really I am focusing still on like the environmental sustainability side and it's engineering so it's like I also have a good job maybe after I graduate and it's geared towards what I you know what I want sustainability also during my undergrad I also did work in the undergraduate research program so I was underneath a PhD student she's working in like the chemical engineering department so I was sort of affiliated and like had some exposure to actual engineering it was some small little project, not too much really related to sustainability, but even so, I got exposed to like chemical engineering and you know the processes and behind all that stuff. So it was a fun experience. Now mm -hmm. comes like actually applying to graduate school. So yes, I would graduate with a chemistry degree. It's way too late to become and switch majors and like switch on to environmental engineering or any sort of environmental science related field just because I already finished my third year. You know, I already had one more year left to graduate, so like. If I switched now, I'd spend another like two or more years getting some other degree, and that wouldn't be worth the time. And so I'm just thinking, you know, I'm going to graduate college soon, get my bachelor's in chemistry. I probably should switch on to some other field, like actual engineering, because, you know, just thinking about like my future life, bachelor's make this much, but master's would make this much, and also a master's in engineering would probably make more. So, like, you already have bachelor's in chemistry versus like a bachelor's in civil engineering, the engineer's gonna make more. This be realistic. So if you have a master's in chemistry versus a master's in engineering, the engineer's gonna make more. Let's, again, just be realistic here. So, which is why I applied to environmental engineering for my master's. And I applied to like, I think seven different graduate schools. But you know, you're probably thinking like, wow, this guy is so smart, you know, he got into engineering, graduated in like one year. No, that's not the case. <laughs> I just applied to like seven schools, but I only got into one of them. Like legit only one. I only had one school to go to and I applied for environmental engineering at UC Irvine. I also applied to like a PhD program in chemistry, uh, PhD programs in other fields, masters in other fields, but I only got into my masters in environmental engineering. So I had no choice. I legit had no choice. So yeah, I'm not as smart as you think I am. <laughs> I just happen to only have one choice, one field, and which is what I got into. It wasn't like my dream school. I don't think I even had a dream school. It was just like I had no other choice. My parents are still sort of disappointed that I'm not a doctor, but I mean, doctor, lawyer, engineer, like you just throw in the word engineer, they'll probably be like, okay, fine, I'll accept it for now, you know, but whatever, it's my life. So yeah, throughout the whole graduate school route, it was like not too difficult. Some of you guys might be thinking, oh man, this guy graduated one year, must be really smart. No, that's not the case. Most of my professors were like about to retire, so they're like, they're giving up on life at that point. They're just like, ah, eh, whatever. Students are students, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna quit this year, so let's just give them all A's. <laughs> that's what happened to my class. It was only easy because my professors didn't really care so much. So I just like flew by the whole graduate school, graduated in like a year, and then came out with this degree. That being said though, I still do care about the environment, so don't think that I'm just doing it because like it was easy. Like I'm doing this because I like it. And I, you know, if I wanted to, I could just quit, went into like computer programming or something, and then just follow that route if I wanted to follow, you know, a different passion or I wanted to follow the money or whatever. I still do like this route, and I still do encourage people who are truly passionate about it, still apply for it, still do what you love. Even if you might not like it in the future, you can always switch, but at least just, you know, just go into that field with no regrets. Like me going to try out the Marine Corps, you know, I don't regret doing that. Yeah, I spent like three years doing that, maybe I wasted time, but like I wouldn't have had that mindset had I not done that in the first place. I got some people who are like just 
incoming their first year and they're already asking me about like environmental engineering so you might like that you might stick with that their first year all the way into your fourth year and then up to graduate school into your field your career you, you might love that you might start off at the right point and then just end up at the right point or you could be like me starting off in like chemistry or doing the military and then coming out as an environmental engineer so you know the whole route towards life is just it's not a straight road, it's like a whole snake. You know, you're gonna be going through different things. Every single event in your life will lead up to something else. And that could turn out to be what you want in the future. And so that's why I am an environmental engineer. That's why I chose this field. Because I literally had to. I had no other choice, <laughs> but I don't regret it. Okay, that's all I have to say. Goodbye.